Why'd you pull me over? Why'd you pull me over? What what is that illegal? Is that illegal? What, what's your name and badge number? All right. What what is illegal? No, I'm not getting. I'm giving you. Right. Did I commit a crime? What crime is that? Welcome to U.S. Corrupt Cops. Join us on the journey to expose corrupt and foolish cops. Subscribe now to explore the topic, Idiot Corrupt Cops Wrongfully Target Innocent Individual and Spread the Message of Justice. Don't forget to like, share, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos. If you like this video, press 1. Let's stand together and make a change. On the morning of September 7th, 2023, around 5 a.m., Auditor Joey Surreal went to a nearby corner store in his pajamas to buy cigarettes. After seeing a traffic stop by the police, he noticed it had ended when he left the store. While passing the officers, he yelled, PIGS! leading Officer Santos from the Miami-Dade Police Department to chase and pull him over. Joey started recording the encounter on his phone, highlighting its importance for later events. This marks the beginning of Officer Santos' alleged harassment against Mr. Joey. Why'd you pull me over? Why'd you pull me over? What? What is that illegal? Is that illegal? What, what's your name and badge number? All right. What? What is illegal? No, I'm not getting. I'm giving you. Did I commit a crime? Yeah, you did. What crime is that? Was that a crime? What? I'm driving. Why? Well, I didn't have no phone. Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. What are you pulling me over for, bro? Let me get a supervisor. Are you gonna give me your ID? Let me get a supervisor. Let me get a supervisor. Let me get a supervisor. What crime did I commit? What crime did I commit? What crime did I commit? Is that is screaming out the window illegal? You're recording out the window. You're on the phone. I, I do it. Prove it. What law? What law? Listen, listen, listen. Hold on. What law is that? What law is that? Did I commit a crime? Give me your supervisor, bro. Okay. Did I commit a crime? Is that a crime? That's not what traffic violation is that? I know my rights, bro. Don't mess with me. What traffic violation is that? Tell me. Tell me first. What traffic violation is that? What what crime did I commit? Bro, get away from my window, bro. All right? Give me your supervisor. Go get your supervisor. And your name and badge number, bro. Officer Santos pulled over Mr. Joey without giving a clear reason, just mentioning an alleged violation of having a phone near the window while driving. The observer thinks this reason is questionable. Mr. Joey shouting from his vehicle doesn't seem to be breaking any laws, leading to the conclusion that the stop might be in retaliation. The analysis goes into the legal side, pointing out that, according to the Fourth Amendment, a cop can only pull you over if they have a reasonable suspicion that you've broken the law general suspicion or gut feelings aren't enough and yelling from a vehicle isn't a valid reason for a stop the discussion hints at exploring the implications for freedom of speech protected by the united states constitution yo listen bro what i did it's not illegal Get you guys a supervisor. I need your name and badge number, bro. All right? You guys pulled over the wrong car. I just baited you guys. I, you guys fell for the bait. And what I did was totally not illegal, okay? All right, give me your names and badge numbers now, and let me get your supervisor. I'm not giving you guys, bro. I'm telling you right now, I did not commit a traffic violation. I'll have my seatbelt on. You guys can go f off, bro, with that, dude. Okay, what's his name and badge number? The one right behind you, bro. All right. Get your supervisor or let me go free, bro. Don't fall for that. Don't fall for that trap, bro. All right. All right. Chill with the light. I don't need that. I'm harmless, bro. All right. All right. What traffic stop? Listen, what traffic stop? What's the, what, what is it? What is it? Tell me what I committed. What, what traffic? Nah, you guys pull it all the time with people. Okay, listen. Check it out, bro. Let's talk. Let's talk real quick. Listen, bro. What I just did, like I said, I just put you guys to a bait, to a test. 
All right, same driving with the phone like this. Bro, that's not illegal, dude. All right. That's what he said he pulled me over for, bro. All right, cool, bro. I wish, uh, if you're, listen, if you're straight with me, bro, I respect you. I respect y'all, uh, you guys. But when you start coming at me like this idiot back there, trying to give me ID, you can't do this with the phone and yelling out the window. That's, I ain't giving you guys no ID, nothing, dude. All right, thank you. That's it. All right, all right, all right. It looks like Officer Santos pulled over Mr. Joey just because he got offended when called a derogatory term. But stopping someone based on personal offense isn't legally justified for a traffic stop. This suggests that the detention might be unlawful and driven by personal bias. The scenario also discusses whether yelling offensive language from a vehicle is legal in Florida, highlighting the protection of such speech under the First Amendment according to the 1971 Supreme Court case Cohen v. California. In conclusion, the stop seems to be unlawful and retaliatory, as officers try to find reasons to justify it after the fact. So, hang tight, he's gonna get a supervisor and then we'll go from there, right? Alright, how long is this gonna take, bro? This is a traffic stop, bro, there's a time limit for this. Traffic stop. Papi, but what what traffic stop did I what 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 violation did I commit, bro? You tell me what traffic stop. He just told me that you guys saw what I did. So what traffic did answer me that? What's up? No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What are you talking about? Emergency vehicle on oh, no, the You guys finished the stop. I saw you guys. You guys were done with the stop, dude. I just have it on camera. I already know that. I already know that. That's why I did that, bro. For the I, bro, I don't have to give ID unless I commit a crime about or has. Statute code 901-151. I didn't commit a crime or a traffic violation. And? Okay, but what? But why did he pull me over? He just told me, listen, on camera, he pulled me over because I went like that and yelled. It wasn't because I went in the same lane in the side. Or none of that. That's what he told me. And you guys were done with the stop. Okay, go ahead. No, no, I was explaining to him the, the If we, we, we can have a cordial conversation, tell him, bro. Oh, absolutely. What's up, bro? Listen, what's your name and batch number, first of all? Okay, check it out. I just bait you guys. I put you to a bait. You guys fell for the bait, bro. I, you guys were done with the traffic stop. Listen, listen to me. What I just did, you just said you pulled me over for doing all this bull. It's not a crime, bro. You on your phone. I, I, listen, bro. No, don't, it's not, I wasn't on my phone. I wasn't on my phone. Let's have a cordial conversation. What crime is that? What? No, no, you weren't. No, you weren't. Listen, I know that. You guys were done. It was on camera. Yes, you were. The car was a You guys were done. Listen, the car was... Listen, I know my... So stop. Okay. Okay. You need to give me your identification before he gets here. If not, when he gets here, we're taking you to jail. Okay, so under threat of arrest, you're gonna, you take me to jail when he gets here? Yep. Okay, okay, I'll give you, I'll give you my license. Okay. What's your, what, you, you, I'm gonna file complaints on this, bro. Because what I did, it's, it's on camera, bro. That's fine, here you go. I wanna know what traffic law did I break, though. Tell me, tell me what law, what violation. Hey, listen, bro. That's, you can't even, you're gonna charge me for that, too? Go ahead, bro, do that. Go ahead, do that. That's not on set, that's not a law, bro. I just finished getting in an accident two days ago, all right? So, don't even come up with that retaliation and act, okay? Do what you gotta do, bro, go ahead. On the threat of arrest, I gave you my ID, bro. You, this isn't done, bro. You guys don't know who I am, bro. This, you know who Raggle Monkey is? That's my boy, bro, all right? This is going on my platforms, all of them. That, boom, you guys fell for the bait. I gave you my ID, that's it. You're not searching my car, none of that book. They don't even ask. In this situation, there's an incident involving a driver named Mr. Joey, who got pulled over by Officer Santos in Florida. The law, Florida Statute 322.15, requires drivers to have and show their license when asked by an officer, but this is supposed to be based on a valid reason for the stop. Officer Santos claimed Mr. Joey had his phone by the window while driving, trying to justify the stop. However, Florida law only prohibits texting while driving, not just having a phone in the car. 
Mr. Joey asked for a supervisor, Sergeant Rodney, but the situation didn't get any better. The suggestion is that Officer Santos might not have had a valid reason for the stop, raising questions about the legality of the whole situation. Yeah, yeah. all right? You guys were done with the traffic stop, bro. So that's not gonna fly in court, all right? Bobby, I saw you, dude. That, that car, you were done with the traffic stop, okay? I know, bro, but this is ridiculous. You know why I do this? To, to, to see what you guys pull and violate people's rights and do this shit. This is why I do this, bro, all right? I was on my way home, bro. I was on my way home. I just went to get a pack of these. I ain't gonna lie. All right, I saw that. What's up? Bobby, listen to this, bro. You know what I'm gonna tell you right now? I don't answer questions no more, bro. That's it. From this point on, I don't answer questions. Yeah. Exit, right, when we're walking back Bobby, do you understand what I don't answer questions no more is, bro? Do what you gotta do. You got my information, bro. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah? That's it. Sorry, you need to speak to a supervisor? Yeah, bro. What's going on with your... With your with I your... can't hear you. Okay, What's going on? I'll do it. I'll do it. What's your name and badge number real quick? Sergeant Rodney, 9306. You know that I was driving? They were done with the traffic stop and I yelled out the window. And I baked them. To see if they come and pull me over, and they pulled me over, they wanted my ID saying that I, I committed a traffic violation. No, I didn't, bro. I didn't do that. So what's up with that? I'm sorry. I'm a little pissed off right now because this is why I, I record you guys, bro. You, you can't, you have no reason to pull me over. I, I have my seatbelt on, all right? I don't know what was the reason for the stop, but he just threatened me with arrest if I didn't give him my ID. Well, that, I didn't that commit is, a crime. That's no, it, correct. That, why is that? What crime did I commit? You have to what provide your ID on a traffic stop. No, but but what what traffic stop did I violate? That's the that thing. That is what the it, I don't know. I he told me that I was yelling out the window with my phone like this. What okay. crime is that? You tell me what crime is that? Because I'm filing a complaint in the morning. I'm filing complaints in the morning. I'm going to the headquarters. Right, I know fine. Diaz, bro. That's Listen, right. I understand that. But it's not my. It's not the, you guys' right to get my ID without committing no crime, dude. I didn't commit no crime or traffic violation, bro. I don't have, I have a fourth amendment right, bro, to my privacy. Right. Unless I commit a crime about or has, dude. And okay, he just threatened me with me. arrest. Speak to him because I'm, yeah. I know Diaz, I'm gonna file complaints on these guys. And if you don't do your job and let them know what's up, I'm gonna file a complaint on you too, bro. Nah, bro, hey, I appreciate your demeanor, bro. I, I apologize, bro. I, I do, but I, I have the right to yell out the window, dude. Yeah, that's, that's part of your personal And you guys were done with that. I saw it, dude. But the, the way it works, man, if our lights are still on, that means we, even even if the car is taken off, we may still be conducting some type Dude, of but the car was not there, dog. Even if the car is taken off, I, I don't know at what point. I have it. No, I, I recorded the whole yeah. thing, dude. But that's that's where it's at. It's you guys pulled me over, well, not you. Yeah, I know he's your partner. You got a back of the blue. I get that. Your partner just didn't like me yelling out the window with the phone. That's why, listen, I asked him in the beginning and twice, why'd you pull me over? He told me because of that. Not because of when right, right, right. I didn't move switch lanes. I got it all on camera, bro. Okay. So watch out what he does. He can do what he does. You guys already violated my Fourth Amendment with threat of arrest. Can't do that. He's fi I'm filing a complaint in the morning. I'm going at 10 o'clock to the headquarters and talk to Diaz, bro. I know the captain, bro. That was not cool. I'm going to show him the video. Right. But you're cool, you're no, cool. I got you. You, you are aware, bro, when you're, when you're driving the vehicle on a traffic stop, you gotta, you gotta get your, your, your I don't, Bobby, if I commit a va traffic violation, this is why I asked him, what's the reason for the stop? He told me, you're with the phone and you're yelling. That's not a crime. That's not a crime. He said it twice on camera. He never said I violated any type of violation, driving violation at all, bro. This is why I asked that. I understand where you're coming from, but that's not why he pulled me over, bro. That's not why he pulled me over. Okay, bye. Th thank you, bro. Thank you. At this juncture, the second officer asserted that Mr. Joey failed to change lanes or pull over as he passed by, leading to the traffic stop. However, it's worth noting that the officers had already initiated the initial traffic stop, as the vehicle in question was no longer present. Typically, when a driver is free to leave, it signals the end of the investigation. Therefore, it could be argued that Mr. Joey may not have needed to change lanes or pull over by the time he drove past. Regardless, a crucial point to emphasize is that Officer Santos did not mention any of this initially when questioned about the reason for the stop. This implies that the reason was concocted later on.
You're giving me a ticket for something that you didn't pull me over for. Two right. for what? That that's that's not a crime, dude. Bro, listen. You did. You told me you pulled me over because I was yelling out the window on my phone. You're, give me the ticket. You're a scumbag. You're a piece of shit. You're getting a complaint out of you. You've got. I'm finding a complaint. You're, you just didn't like for me to record and pass by yelling, bro. That's what you told me. Is that? I'm driving safe. All right. Get out of my face, bro. Kick rocks. Get out of here. Dismiss. Get out. Get out of my face. Hey, have a nice day, man. All right, bro. As absurd as it may sound, Officer Santos issued not one but two citations to Mr. Joey, who was genuinely innocent. Quoting Officer Santos, the first ticket was for holding an electronic device while driving and the second ticket was for failing to move over. We have already addressed that simply holding a device while driving is not legal and we have also clarified why Mr. Joey didn't need to move over or change lanes as the initial traffic stop had concluded. Let's examine the issued tickets. All right, guys. So this right here is what this man pulled me over for. There's one ticket right there. It's, um, there wasn't no traffic stop anymore. They have pulled away the person they have pulled over, I'm sorry. And we got texting while driving. Mind you, look at the price. Texting while driving, which I picked up my phone from my lap as they got behind me, right? Correct, you guys are with me? And I guess saw, saw me through the back of the window with my phone in my hand, ready to press record, okay? So they got me for that. And that's the price right there. The initial citation was issued under the violation of Florida statute section, 316.126, subsection 1B, imposing a penalty of $149. The statute emphasizes that when an authorized emergency vehicle with visual signals is parked on the roadside, the driver of every other vehicle must, as soon as it is safe, vacate the lane closest to the emergency vehicle when driving on an interstate highway or another highway with two or more lanes traveling in the direction of the emergency vehicle. The second citation was issued under the violation of Section 316.305, Subsection 3A, which prohibits a person from operating a motor vehicle while manually typing or entering multiple letters, numbers, symbols, or other characters into a wireless communications device, or while sending or reading data on such a device for the purpose of non-voice interpersonal communication including but not limited to communication methods such as texting, emailing, and instant messaging. This citation carried a penalty of $129. To say the least, both of these citations were baseless. As of the date of this recording, Mr. Joey has yet to provide an update or mention any complaints filed against the officers. 2015 depicts jogger and father of three Corey Dickerson taking a break under a streetlight during a late night run when he was approached by Officer Kenneth Price of the Talladega Police Department in Talladega, Alabama. Well, I live in Talladega. Did you get off work or what are you doing? Uh, well, um, have I done anything wrong, first of all? Well, no, we have to ask that because, see, at night we have to check and see we've got a lot of burglaries and theft and stuff like that going on. We don't know who you are. Oh, uh, well, I'm nobody. You see? I'm nobody. You see, look at our job, Mark Portson. Right now, I'm just minding my own. Well, where are you going? Nowhere in particular. Nowhere in particular. It looks like you've been running. You've been running? Yeah. Where have you been running from? Uh, just around. Just around? Yeah. Yeah. Where are you going to? Nowhere in particular. You got some ID on you? Uh, I do, but... What's your name? Uh, Corey. Yeah. <sighs> well, looks like I'm about to get harassed. Oh, 
Boy, you don't look all right. Huh? Come over here. I'd rather, I'd rather stand in front of your uh, police car. So, what? Fred, I'd rather stand in front of your camera. Stand right here. Yeah. yeah right. I just want, would like to, know, to let you know that I am recording. Okay, that's And fine. as soon as this video starts recording, it automatically uploads, so. Hey, look. Hey, my camera does the same thing. Yeah. And you can tell them why I stopped you. It is uh, 1230 in the morning. All right. I've had a lot of burglaries and thefts. Uh -huh. You can get this on camera. All right. Okay. So I'm now I'm just asking you for your eyes. For the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center's guidelines on the Fourth Amendment, actions that deviate from the norm for the time of day can indicate potential criminal activity and may be used to justify a Terry stop. Behavior that might otherwise seem innocent could give rise to reasonable suspicion for a stop and investigation, particularly in areas known for high crime rates or at unusual times of day. In the 2016 case of U.S. v. Spears in the Fifth Circuit Court, it was emphasized that merely being present in a high crime area isn't sufficient on its own to justify suspicion of criminal involvement. This suggests that any single factor mentioned by Officer Price may not alone constitute reasonable suspicion. However, the 2016 case of U.S. v. Quinn in the Eighth Circuit Court reaffirmed that a combination of factors could indeed justify a Terry stop, even if no single factor would be enough on its own. Therefore, most courts would likely agree that Officer Price's list of factors could collectively amount to reasonable suspicion and justify the stop. your name? Am I suspected of being... What am is I, your name? Corey. Corey what? Just, right now, I prefer to just go by Corey. No ID on you? I do, but... Am I being detained, sir? Am I being detained, uh, sir? Yes, sir, and you can get that on camera, too. And what, okay. and what crime am I uh, suspected of committing? I do need to find out who you are and what you're doing. Do you understand that? I do, but I what, what, what crime am I suspected uh, uh, What crime am I suspected of committing, sir? You're not committing a crime. I just want to know what So, am I free to go? Not yet. So, you can guys can detain me. Contrary to popular belief, Officers are not required to articulate a specific crime that they reasonably suspect has or will be committed. The Terry ruling dictates that officers only need to articulate specific facts which justify their suspicion, not specific crimes. If an officer compiles a reasonable amount of objective facts which lead to the assumption that criminal activity may be present, then the officer has acquired reasonable suspicion and may conduct an investigatory stop to determine the specificity of the criminal behavior or lack thereof, auditors often use the phrase, what crime do you suspect me of committing, as if a specific crime is required for detention, but that is not the case. A specific crime is only required in the event of an arrest, which is justified by probable cause, not reasonable suspicion. Can I get your name, sir? Price. 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 Could have a badge number? It, oh, everything is going on video. See, this everything. Is what we do all, all night. Uh, okay? It's not just you that we stop. Well, that's, it was a cop. That was a police. Matter of fact, that looks like him right there. Really? I've seen him pass me twice, and he didn't have so any reason to point, stop me. Right? right. Okay. Now I've explained to you the reason why I stopped you. If everything comes back, I'll let you go. And I'm pretty sure he seen me earlier, so I'm pretty sure he could tell you exactly what I was doing when he seen okay. me. This guy, apparently he was running, standing over here. I was concerned about it. Uh -huh. He wants to get to us all on video. I explained to him why I stopped. He just goes back for it. No, he won't give me his full name, information. Maybe you can get something from him. Sir. I, I, I seen you running. You were on over by Tyler Dickey Downs, wasn't you? Right. Yeah, you were on sidewalk then, though. Uh, yeah. I did see him on over on, on Talladega Downs over here. It, it was jogging. You were walking my first and then he started running. Right. But that was before he seen he seen me in my patrol car. All he seen was in front of my car. Then I, I uh, seen you uh seen you turn and I kept on uh, yeah, he jogging. Was run, he was running, he was walking, then he ran, then I made my turn, then you know then he saw the side of my car, but he didn't know I was police and then started running. But you gotta understand, whenever we're out here this late at night and something like that goes on, 
He's going to want to do his investigation. I mean, it's not like it's going to hurt nothing. I mean, all we're going to do is just check ID real quick. Okay, okay but see, thing is, I, I don't know too much about the law. I'm not a lawyer. Don't even, I don't even pretend to be one. But I know that in order to detain me, you got to have some type of reasonable suspicion that I've committed some type of crime. And no, you, right. so you rightfully, you're just invading my, uh, uh, I'm minding my own business out here. I'm literally jogging. I'm I'll exercising. I'll tell you, I'll tell you well, I'm I, trying to I'm get. I'm going to give you some reasonable suspicion on this. I'll tell you the, the, the problem call. It's going to be for the fact that you're running in a neighborhood. He didn't even see me running. He, he literally seen me just standing right here. I was literally just bent over this right here, catching my breath. He didn't see me running. He just stopped me, you know? I was, he just pulled over uh, 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 and just, you know? Yeah. So, again, what suspicion have I, what I mean, what, 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 what suspicion do you have of me committing a crime? Like, what, what the have I done? Let me tell you something. I just don't like my rights being violated, man. That's it, man. That's, that's it, man. I just it's like, be a violation of rights. I'll let you know real quick because I'm not going to be somebody who's going to be doing some stupid stuff and trying to go to right. jail or get sued or anything. Okay? No. All right. You go down to Talladega Downs and you can ask any of the guys down there. Another the police the car. Straightforward guys. I'm one of the nicest guys you're going to And I'm man, you can ask anybody around me if they know Corey with dreads and they'll tell you that he don't bother anybody. He well, don't talk to anybody. Look, I don't, I don't know you. You know, you ain't never met me, have you? Nah, nah. You don't look familiar at all, yeah. Tim. Not many people do know me around here. That's why I get out on people. I try to normally is you see me out with somebody, it's just me getting out. It's a crowd on the walk. Just talk to them, get to know who they are, find out who you know, find out what they're doing. Just so whenever I know I'm getting my butt whooped one day, maybe somebody be inclined to help me out a little bit. Right. I hear you there. I hear that. And you know that's that's what I do. And what, all he's out here doing is he's just trying to make sure and his thing is he likes to make sure nobody's house is getting broke into. And all this other stuff, and yeah, uh, he, he, you know, he don't know, he didn't know you were running. He just sees a man out here just sweating, drops out one of the, you know, a business. And I told him I was know. all right, so that that should have been good enough reason for him to just go well, on, man. Yeah, but see, if I tell you something, are you going, are you going to automatically believe me every time I talk? I don't to believe you? anybody. Exactly. There I, you go, right? I why mean, would, why would we don't believe nobody? Nine percent of people we talk to lie to us about everything we you know, mm. we talk about. And that's why I didn't believe him when he said that he had a. Uh, 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 the reports of burglars. I've lived over this side of town for 15 years. I Mr. Dickerson asserts his lack of trust in anyone, which the officer echoes, stating his own distrust. Mr. Dickerson then cleverly turns the officer's argument against him, questioning why he should trust the officer's intentions if the officer doesn't trust his. This exchange underscores a fundamental issue in the relationship between law enforcement and their communities. Many officers expect trust from civilians based on the perceived integrity of the police force's reputation. They often view themselves as the good guys within their departments. However, the overall reputation of police officers has significantly deteriorated in recent years, becoming a mere shadow of its former self. The advent of the digital age has ushered in a new level of transparency, which has strained relations between civilians and law enforcement. Whether this strain arises from the nature of police duties, a politically charged atmosphere, or isolated incidents amplified through social media is a question best left to sociologists. Nonetheless, one fact remains. The relationship between police and their communities has undergone a profound transformation, tarnishing the reputation of law enforcement within certain segments of society. Right here, girl just got, got her house kicked in twice in one month. What name? What, what's her name? She, I, I can't remember her name. She's from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. She moved down here about two months ago. Got her house, got a door kicked in twice in one month. No, I she don't know her. Door, trust me. No, I was saying, I don't know her then. I probably would have heard that if I'd known her. Okay. That, that actually did happen. I had to go in there and clear it out for her because she was scared to death to go back inside her house when she got home and her door was wide open. Hmm. I ain't gonna lie about that. We have had some burglars, not many. Between the burglars and the shootings and everything going on here. I, mean, I understand the shooting. I understand the shooting, but those uh, what I understand was those was a whole bunch of little uh, little teenagers. I'm a grown man. Well, I got three there's kids. Some, there's some adult. There's some adults mixed into it too. Uh, I have got a whole that. list of everybody involved, and there's some adults. Yeah. Some of the teenagers started it, but then yeah. adults got involved. Yeah, then you got to understand when an adult gets when a teenager goes by, and starts shooting up stuff. One of those adults' houses gets starts up, and he gets mad. He's gonna start retaliating too. Right. And that, that's where everything's going in, so it's a never ending cycle. But all he's asking for is his name, Daddy Bird. Make sure you ain't got no warrant for your arrest. I mean, you tell me you're a good enough citizen that you 
obey all the laws and everything. I ain't say yeah. I obey. I ain't say all that. Got three kids. I hope you do. I mean, I, I, I take care of guys. I mean, I ain't just know just one hundred percent. Uh, uh, well, ain't nobody one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Good Christian person. Well, but what I everybody I, got their flaws. Right, right, right. And that's all it's come boiling down to. He just want to make sure you ain't got no active warrants. Make sure there ain't been no burglars. In case there is one that pops up down the street, somebody's door got kicked in. We'll kind of know in the general area where to start looking at. Mm. And that's all it's boiling down to. I understand that, but at the same time, I really just don't want my uh, rights violated, and I feel like my rights are being violated right now. Because well, I'm pretty sure that you guys are going to try to search me or whatever well, anyway, whether I give you permission or not. A search. And I and and I also want let me I don't mean to interrupt you, but I don't trust police just because uh I got my hair pulled out, I got I was choked, tased, maced, beaten bloody. You hear me? Beaten bloody by four cops while I was in handcuffs. But was it any of that stuff? Uh, no, but that don't matter. Don't, he look kind of looks familiar. Uh, no, he does look familiar, no. but like I don't trust that well, one. One yeah. bad apple can uh, 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 will spoil a whole bunch for me, you know. I'm so gonna you, I'm gonna tell you this: if if I want, if we want to search you, we're not we're gonna do a weapon search. We're not gonna dig on you and everything else unless you tell us you want us to do. You know, yeah, go through my pockets, pull them out, do whatever you want to. We're, mm. We can search you for weapons if we choose to. Mm -hmm. We're not pushing it that far yet. Mm -hmm. If he wants to push it far enough, he can even arrest you for failure to identify the law enforcement. Is that a real law? It's a real law. I am gonna look that up we tonight. Alabama is among the 24 states with stop and identify statutes, empowering officers to request identification from individuals they reasonably suspect of are currently committing or will commit a crime. Each state has its own version of the law, like Alabama Code the 15th of May 30, with varying degrees of authority and specific language, but they all serve the same purpose. In states without such statutes, Officers can still investigate suspicious activities and detain individuals with reasonable suspicion, but they cannot demand identification until they have probable cause for an arrest. Officer Price believes he has reasonable suspicion, and under Alabama Code the 15th of May 30, he can demand Mr. Dickerson's ID and potentially arrest him for refusal to comply. Whether Officer Price's suspicion would stand in court is debatable, ultimately subject to a judge's decision. What more time it is? Huh? Time is. Uh, it's recording right, it's still recording. Uh, last I checked it was what, 12.20? 12.44 now. 12.44? 12.44, you out here, middle of the intersection, business right there, a bunch of houses around here, you sweating. I saw you right I was saying, you know why I'm sweating though. You... He doesn't, he, he's out here, he's the one who made the initial stop, all right? Mm. All he's asking is for a name, date of birth, so we can check you out, check you out, make sure he ain't got no warrant for about that. That's all this boils down to. And then that's another thing. I might do have warrants on me. I'll be a fool to give you guys my name. Then I go to jail and lose my job. I don't have any bail money, no bond money. Well, do you have warrants for you? I hope not. I've been I, uh, last time I went to court, nobody tried to arrest me. So last time you went to court? Oh, uh, what that was? Uh, two weeks ago, two two weeks, weeks ago. What? Huh? What? There ain't no, there ain't domestic violence. No, no, man, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, trespassing. Trespassing. That ain't nothing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, trespassing, you know if you have a warrant on it because you know where you can't go and everything. Uh, yeah, where you trespassed yeah. at? Uh, Knoxville. Knoxville? Mm. Let me guess. Family related problems? Girlfriend. Ex-girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, see, uh, uh, you see her? That's fine. Yeah, but I ain't headed to Knoxville. I'll actually stop right here and finna head right back home, back that way. Yeah. According to a post on Mr. Dickerson's Facebook page, he was eventually released without being charged for any crimes and without surrendering his identification. It is unknown whether Officer Price was disciplined for his actions, but Mr. Dickerson's video went viral shortly after being posted, and several local news organizations reached out to Talladega Police Chief Jason Busby for comment, but none were successful. Overall, Officer Price and the Talladega Police Department get a B-, although they did not violate the rights of Mr. Dickerson and ultimately let him go without incident, they continued to inconvenience Mr. Dickerson well after he established his credibility and made every effort to dispel the officer's concerns. Without giving in to their coercion, Mr. Dickerson made it abundantly clear that he was innocently jogging and one of the officers even testified to that fact. 
but Officer Price still pushed for identification and made accusatory statements. The attitude and conduct of Officer Price are a prime example of a major contributing factor to the deterioration of the relationship between officers and community members. Mr. Dickerson gets an A for remaining calm and keeping his ego in check without allowing Officer Price to trample his rights. Mr. Dickerson was doing nothing wrong, and he did a good job of conveying his innocence to the officers and using their own logic against them without provoking them or becoming vulgar. Mr. Dickerson's unassuming attitude and positive but stern dialogue allowed him to navigate this interaction successfully and continue jogging in peace. On December 31st, 2020, Matthew was on his way to a gas station in Rinkin, Georgia, to buy a Mountain Dew. Coincidentally, a DUI checkpoint was set up in anticipation of New Year's Eve. Matthew recorded himself driving through the checkpoint, purchased his drink, and parked about 100 yards away to observe and film the scene. As he walked toward the checkpoint, he was approached by two troopers from the Georgia State Patrol. For what? Put the cigarette out for me. Cigarette, can you put it out for me? What did I do? Park your car down there and you're walking. Okay. So we're just trying to make sure you're okay, okay? The trooper fits off, you just put that cigarette out for me. I've had people put them out for me and I don't want to drop them down. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hang on, sir. Hang on, sir. You have any idea on me? I don't. Okay, where are you coming from? Over there. Where's over there? I, I parked over there and I was just walking. Why would you do that? Is this a consensual conversation? Uh, no, it's not. Right now you're being okay. detained for questioning purposes because okay. you parked your vehicle at the back of a road check and decided to walk through it. Is there any reason for that? The road check is over there. Right, but you parked before the road check instead of coming I through the road check. I just wanted to watch. You just wanted to watch? I just wanted to watch. Okay. That's all. I just wanted to watch. Uh, you haven't had anything to drink tonight? I don't drink. You don't drink at all? I don't drink at all. Uh, do you mind if I check you out? Just make sure you're safe to drive really fast? I've had Mountain Dew. Okay. Do you mind if I check guys? I do. Fast? I've had eight eye operations that won't work. Okay. You want to just blow on the PVT then? Nope. You don't want to blow it off? I'm not driving. You were driving. I walked. Yes, but you were driving. As okay. long as I can prove that you're in uh, the operation of a motor vehicle three hours prior to me stopping you. Okay. And this has been 20 minutes, you didn't not stop three hours. Vehicle. It doesn't matter. I don't have to stop okay. you in a vehicle. I'm sorry. I'll just exercise my Sixth Amendment right. You mean Fifth Amendment right? Sixth. You mean Fifth Amendment right? Sixth. That's fine. Do you have license on you? I don't. I'd like to exercise my Sixth Amendment right. That's fine. What's your last name? What's your last name? Did I did I commit a crime? I mean, seriously, guys. I, I just wanted to watch, and and I'll do everything I can to dispel your. Matthew is being held in detention, prompting a discussion about his rights under the Fifth and Sixth Amendments. The Fifth Amendment guarantees the right to have a lawyer present during police questioning, as established in the Miranda v. Arizona case, while the Sixth Amendment ensures the right to effective legal representation during criminal proceedings. The difference lies in when these rights apply, with the Fifth Amendment being invoked before an arrest and the Sixth Amendment coming into play afterward. The scenario references the Davis v. U.S. case, where the Supreme Court ruled that a vague statement about wanting a lawyer didn't count as a clear request for counsel, emphasizing the importance of being explicit when invoking this right. Although Matthew didn't directly ask for a lawyer, some argue that his statement could reasonably be interpreted as a request for one. Ultimately, whether his statement qualifies as a request for counsel would be decided by the court. Matthew's situation is complicated by his inability to afford the risk of arrest, given his family's distance and financial situation. Despite not explicitly asking for a lawyer after confirming his identity and sobriety, he was let go without being arrested. It's typical that DUI drivers park their cars and take walk. And walk, that way they don't get locked up for DUI. Except for the fact that so I already then, went through the checkpoint. Okay, I don't know that I didn't check here. But I have all articulable reasonable suspicion to think that you're a DUI driver at that point. I and I need to make you listen to me, okay? Your listen to me, belief. okay? I'm talking. Listen to me, okay? 
So when I ask you certain things, that's why I'm asking you certain things, okay? And for you to get all defensive about it and not answer my questions, listen to me, I'm talking. I'll let you talk in a minute, okay? And when I ask you for your information, ask you if you've been drinking, ask where your car is, you're being ambiguous about everything because you think you know your rights and you're going to get all get over on the top and all this stuff like that. I watch you too, too. I get it, okay? I but wanted to be left alone. I got I you. answered your question about drinking. I told you where I was, where I, where I came from. I pointed to where I parked my car. I was walking. I did everything I could to spell your suspicion. You still decided to put me in handcuffs. For because violating, you to identify for yourself. violating no laws. You need yes, to you have to identify yourself when I ask you to. In what situation? The fact that you were driving and you stopped at a road check. I have every bit of articulable, reasonable suspicion. The road ARS. Check. I did not check you with the road check, we'll, sir. We'll see. I mean, okay. I went through the road check. What I'm telling polite. you is, I have all articulable, reasonable suspicion. You, right? I did. And now I'm answering what you said. We're not going to get anywhere, okay? Because you have your thoughts, I have my thoughts, you want to agree with my thoughts, okay? So have a good night, okay? okay? I just wanted to tell you one thing. The difference between the Fifth Amendment and the Sixth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment is your right to remain silent so that you don't incriminate yourself. I did nothing wrong. I'm not afraid of incriminating yourself. But the Sixth, part of the Sixth, is your right not to answer questions without having an attorney present. When you go to court, they could use the fact that you pledge the Fifth against you. They could bring it up and say, hey, he decided to plead the fifth and it makes you look bad. Okay. But you plead the sixth because you're asking for counsel before you ask questions, you can't be used against you. Okay, well you have to invoke that you want counsel present. You can't I say said, I'm invoking my sixth. You I have to say it. I want my attorney present. That's case law. You don't have to say. That's case law. No, you can just have to say I'm invoking my, I want to exercise my sixth amendment right. That's all you have to say. That's Supreme Court law. Okay. Listen, I just wanted to watch. Am I good, good to just you're, you're stand everyone and watch? Yes, That's all I want to do. Watch and walk around. Matthew got stopped by cops after he parked his car before a DUI checkpoint and walked through it. Whether the cops were right to stop him depends on whether they thought his actions were sneaky. The law in Georgia says that just avoiding a checkpoint by driving normally doesn't give cops a reason to stop you. But if your driving looks weird and makes cops think you're up to something illegal, like suddenly slowing down and turning sharply, they might stop you. In Matthew's case, even though what he did was legal, a court could see it as suspicious since it's not what most people do. Whether it's suspicious enough to justify the stop depends on the details and whether the cops can explain why they thought he was up to something. Matthew filing a complaint against the cops brings up questions about whether they were fair and within the law when they stopped him. This situation highlights the ongoing debate about DUI checkpoints and the need for clear rules about when cops can stop someone for avoiding them, as well as oversight to make sure they're following the rules. Miss Maddie's initial error is instinctively undoing her seatbelt without a dash cam to validate that she did so herself. This action practically hands the officer reasonable suspicion for the stop on a silver platter. Whether or not Miss Maddie was wearing a seatbelt becomes a matter of debate, ultimately boiling down to her word against the officers in court. After being pulled over, it's advisable to remain still, turn on your interior light, and place your hands on the steering wheel until instructed otherwise by the officer. Avoid doing anything that might fuel the officer's suspicions or further justify the stop. Miss Maddie admits her mistake to the officer. I just took my seatbelt off as a habit. Yeah, sure, license, please, yeah sure. I just took this off, just so you know. I wasn't driving without a the this habit. Stopped, huh? That's the reason you're being stopped. No, I just took it off.
Miss Maddie is trying to be truthful with the officer, but the officer exploits her honesty, interpreting it as an admission of guilt. As seen earlier in the video, the officer passed Miss Maddie while traveling in the opposite direction, providing him with a clear view of the seatbelt if that was his focus. It's crucial to never provide an officer with more information than absolutely necessary. Miss Maddie's prompt defense only provided the officer with reasonable suspicion. Without her dash cam, Miss Maddie would lack evidence to support her claim. However, her nervous and defensive demeanor could be used as evidence to justify the officer's suspicion. I swear to God, I, I, Maybe it's habit. Yeah. Um, I wasn't speeding. Oh, man, that's always the reason you're being stopped today because you can have the seatbelt on. No, I just here. took it off. I swear to God, I, I have a camera. Yeah, so I have a camera. I can play it for you because it's habit. When I stop the car and put it in pack, park, I take it off. Because my husband owns a dealership. Okay. So does that mean you can just put dealer tag on any vehicle that you own? No, we're going to sell it. Are usually whenever yes. for a dealer or if they're showing the vehicle, which yeah. is neither of the it's, it's not neither case right now. After Miss Maddie pointed out her dash cam, the officer suddenly shifted focus to another aspect of the stop. According to the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles website, a dealer tag can indeed be utilized by the dealer's family or employees for personal purposes. This officer clearly has no idea what he's talking about and is presenting his speculations about dealer tags as facts. No, oh, he's going to sell it. I'm just test driving it. Are you now? Okay, but you just said this is your car. No, it's, of course, I'm driving it, so I have to have insurance on it and stuff. Well, right the now I'm driving it, so it's not like. Do you want me to call my husband? You can talk to him. Mm -hmm. I go off of what you, what you tell me. You tell me that this is your vehicle. You still live on Country Place Road? Yeah. All right, Brad, I swear I was wearing Make I sure have you a... also uh, start driving cars at this time. Huh? Put a put a real tag on your vehicle and I'll get a tag, okay? Uh, okay, but I swear I have okay. The officer departed the scene without giving Miss Maddie any citations, showcasing the significance of a dash cam. Without it, this officer might have sparked a prolonged legal dispute rooted solely in erroneous information and misapplication of the law. The subsequent video on Sean Chavez's channel similarly highlights an officer's misapplication of the law, underscoring the accountability provided by a dash cam when officers are uncooperative and misinformed. Without issuing Miss Maddie any citations, this situation falls under California Vehicle Code 25950, which clearly states that emitted light from all lamps and reflectors visible from the front of a vehicle must be white or yellow. Mr. Chavez has previously been stopped multiple times for his headlights and has proven in municipal court that they are legal. He is more than well prepared for this interaction with the court documents and the exact statute on hand ready to show Officer Lamelli. However, the officer's ego won't allow him to let go that easily. Yeah, it's not that section there. I couldn't find any law that prohibits altering headlights to affect their performance. There's no such statute in the California Vehicle Code. It's likely that Officer Lamella is misinformed. Mr. Chow Bachan has done everything possible to address the officer's concerns. By refusing to acknowledge the court documents, this officer is essentially saying that the judge is wrong. In court, the judge reviews all relevant statutes, ordinances, and case law pertaining to the case. If the statute Officer Lamley is seeking existed, the judge would have considered it before ruling the lights legal. Check your uh, license, 
I just went through this like two weeks ago with Le Bleu, right here, probably 200 yards from here. Yeah, that's right, but that's that's a different section that he cited you for. He didn't that cite That section doesn't apply to altering your the performance of the headlights. Le Bleu looked it up, he couldn't find anything, he let me go. Well, good for him. Officer Lamele currently thinks he comprehends the legality of this interaction better than a municipal judge and several fellow officers, including his district's head and a watch commander. His pride and ego hinder his capacity to impartially execute his duties and adhere to the letter of the law rather than his individual interpretations of it. I'll give you a warning. Just You're saying you're trying to take care of it? Actually, I'm not. I'd, I'd rather leave them that way. I, I really believe that they're lawful. I went to court on it. I checked with the Sergeant Chandler here at this district. I checked with the watch commander at CHP, and I really, truly believe that they're lawful. I, if you're, you've taken the time out to stop me for this, if you want to cite me for it, I'd like to get a citation for it so that I can make sure that it's documented properly. Okay. So if you can cite me for a vehicle code that's relevant to these headlights, I, I'd like that because then other... If I'm not going to be cited for it, this is a complete waste of time. It's a violation of my Fourth Amendment rights to travel free. While one might argue that this stop constitutes a Fourth Amendment violation, Officer Lamelli sincerely believes that Mr. Chavez Jean is engaged in wrongdoing and would likely not face repercussions for his actions. In the 2014 case of High and V, North Carolina, the Supreme Court ruled that officers who make reasonable mistakes while carrying out their duties cannot be held accountable for the broader implications of their misunderstandings. The court further stated that while ignorance of the law is generally not an excuse, this does not mean that a reasonable mistake of law cannot justify an investigatory stop. This decision provides officers with a vaguely defined margin for error, which can serve as justification for improper traffic stops and indirectly incentivizes ignorance among officers. Not a violation because you... Chavez alleges that the Fresno Police Department is negligently allowing multiple stops without preventative measures. Officer Lamelli may not be personally liable for targeted stops, but the department fails to educate its officers on legalities. Consequently, Mr. Chavez feels victimized. It's uncertain if the officer's refusal to issue a citation stems from ego or to avoid legal confrontation. Fortunately, dash cam footage could support harassment claims in a lawsuit. So. Can I please have the citation? Mr. Chavez departs the scene without receiving a citation, yet armed with sufficient evidence to build a case for harassment and negligence in a courtroom, courtesy of his dash cam. Mr. Chavez later remarked that he had no intentions of pursuing legal action against the department or the officer. Dash cams provide an unparalleled level of transparency and security in police interactions. Many traffic violations hinge solely on an officer's observations and perceptions. Dash cams level the playing field for drivers, enabling citizens to challenge officers' claims and provide just as much, if not more, evidence for both sides of the story. The era of fabricating false traffic infractions to justify pulling over innocent civilians is a thing of the past. A new era of transparency, accountability, and civilian safety is emerging with the widespread use of dash cameras. The security and peace of mind offered by a dash cam can be likened to an alarm system for your home or vehicle. Investing in a dash cam now could potentially save you money and perhaps even your life in the future. On March 25, 2015, Tony Soto, a 28-year-old resident of Philadelphia, was pulled over by Philadelphia Police Officer Holloway near the 6,700 block of Taurus Dale Avenue, just outside the Philadelphia metro area. This encounter concludes in an unusual and rather solemn manner, so I recommend watching the video through to the end. So it's in the windows, right? That's the reason why you all stopped my vehicle? It's in the windows. Or... All right, I'll have a 10 permit from the state of PennDOT. That's what I'm going to show you first. That invalidates your traffic stop, sir. All right, what's your second reason? Your headlights, sir. My headlights what? What's wrong with my headlights? Your headlight is out. Oh, no, it's not. Both my headlights are on. But I can still see how she works. Well, no, you can't. You'll see the temp permit and you'll see my identification, but you won't see the vehicle registration because your traffic stop is invalidated. I'm my no. In 1979, the Supreme Court ruled that officers need probable cause to stop a vehicle for a license and registration check, as established in Delaware v. Prowse. 
Nearly two decades later, the Supreme Court reaffirmed this principle in what could be seen as a related precedent to Prowse, the 1996 case of Wren v. United States. In the Wren case, the court dismissed the idea that the subjective intentions of police officers influence stops made with probable cause. Here's a snippet from the unanimous opinion delivered by Justice Scalia. Petitioners do not dispute that the police had probable cause to believe that they had violated the D.C. traffic code. Instead, they advance a new argument that in the unique context of civil traffic uh, regulations, probable cause is simply not enough. Automobile use, they say, is so heavily and minutely regulated that total compliance is nearly impossible. Almost all motorists frequently commit technical violations. The danger of approving all traffic stops based on probable cause, they claim, is that it creates a temptation for the police to use traffic stops as a means of investigating other law violations, as to which no probable cause exists, and enables the police to single out disfavored groups for unwelcome police attention. For this reason, petitioners argue, the Fourth Amendment test for traffic stops should be not simply whether probable cause existed to justify the stop, but rather whether a police officer acting reasonably would have made the stop for the reason given. In earlier cases, we have effectively rejected the notion that the constitutionality of traffic stops depends upon the actual motivations of the individual officers involved. The court rejected the defense's argument that it's okay for officers to pull someone over if they can't comply with vehicle laws. They said an officer's intentions don't matter as long as they have a good reason to stop someone. This decision means cops can pull you over for small violations in the hopes of finding bigger crimes, which raises concerns about why they're really pulling people over. Some people think Mr. Soto was targeted because of his activist connections, even though Officer Holloway had a reason to pull Soto over for his tinted windows and busted headlight, it wasn't okay to keep him once he showed paperwork for the tint and proved his lights were fine. Most courts agree that once cops' suspicions are cleared and there's no crime, they can't keep you detained. I see your paperwork. You don't tell me whether my stop is well, valid or not. Well, I'm telling you right now, Officer Holloway. Huh? Okay. All right? Here's the, uh, sir, you don't have the right to open my door. This car has video monitor, just so your, you know. Your, your video okay, on. you don't have the right to open my door, so you're violating my constitutional right now. Still out of here. Sir, I don't have to step out the vehicle. I see your uh, video monitor. For my safety and your safety, I'm going to sit in this vehicle and I'm requesting your supervisor now. You're going to request a supervisor. All right, let me give you my paperwork for the vehicle. Well, my temp permit and my identification. That's number one. My driver's license is number one. All right. Fire marshal identification, that's number two. And badge to go with it. Mr. Soto presented a fire marshal ID and badge to the officer alongside his identification. It wasn't until Mr. Soto posted a video of the interaction that the Philadelphia Police Department realized the badge was fake and that he wasn't a fire marshal. Upon further investigation, the PPD found that Mr. Soto had a prior conviction for impersonating a police officer in 2008. Three years later, he was arrested again for the same offense but the case was dismissed because Pennsylvania's impersonation laws differ from those of other states. Specifically, Pennsylvania's Code 49, 12 states that impersonating a public servant is only a crime if the individual benefits from it. Mr. Soto wasn't charged for impersonating the fire marshal, and it's doubtful that charging him under Code 49, 12, would succeed in court. However, this situation does raise ethical concerns about Mr. Soto's behavior during the interaction and in the past. And I'm requesting a supervisor. Can you call for your supervisor, sir? Yes, I did, sir. Thank you. Do my job. Can you Thank shut you. my door, please? Oh, yeah, that's accurate, too. That's who I work for, just so you know. We're going to stop all this nonsense with you guys down here just stopping people and doing whatever you want. So that's, that's done. Turn your high beam on now. You said my high beams? Your high beams. So, what? All right, not a problem. Second suggestion is that my vehicle headlights, uh, one of my headlights was off, sound like similar to the Brandon Tate Brown issue, you know, but uh, 
Both my headlights are functioning properly. Requested a supervisor at 728. At this juncture, Mr. Soto has sufficiently addressed the officer's suspicions, and Officer Holloway lacks the authority to prolong his detainment. Mr. Soto notes that this situation parallels the Brandon Tate Brown incident, referencing a contentious 2014 police shooting involving 26-year-old Brandon Tate Brown, in which officers were exonerated of any misconduct. Mr. Tate Brown was fatally shot by officers from the 15th District in Philadelphia, the same district to which Officer Holloway and his partner belong. Following Mr. Tate Brown's death, Mr. Soto became deeply involved in civil rights activism, asserting that he was already recognized and disliked by the Philadelphia Police Department before this encounter occurred. And uh, refused to give him the paperwork to the vehicle because the state of Pennsylvania, for the reason why he's stopping me, uh, invalidates his traffic stop uh, for for stopping a vehicle just for the sole purposes of uh, sunscreen in which pen dot ex I have a pen dot ex ex exemption. Thank you. I have for that today. You can stop it for the sole purpose of uh, vehicle tent, 4524. Oh, you can stop, but once I present paperwork to you involving well, I, I your traffic stop, the this, you well, I showed it to you, you refused to look yeah, at it. You didn't give me the, I wasn't stepping okay. into your vehicle. You don't have to step in. I can hold it right here and you can flash can, the flashlight. I'll do it again. tell me what I can see, sir. I can tell you whatever I want because you're a public servant and you work for me. I pay my I taxes. You pay, I pay, look, I pay my taxes. You work for me. I don't work for right. you. Sir. You work for me. Uh, well, tonight you work for me, Officer Holloway. I'm right. All right. That's why you're standing there waiting for your supervisor and I'm sitting here. And I'm perfect. All right. It's not a problem. And I'm, I'll be down here all day and every other day after that and every time you stop me. Here we go. Sunscreen permit again, just so you can see. All right. Here you go. Here's the seal from the state of Pennsylvania right here. Do me a favor. Up. Officer Holloway pulls over Mr. Soto, reads a medical exemption paper, but then unexpectedly leaves the scene without explaining why. Mr. Soto, who's known for his activism, gains attention for his run-ins with the cops, but eventually gets arrested for pretending to be a cop himself and other stuff. His mom starts a Justice for Tony Soto page on Facebook, but it gets taken over by someone else after she dies. Despite Mr. Soto's questionable actions, the Philly cops get criticized for how they handled things. Officer Holloway's behavior is called out as unprofessional and Mr. Soto's activism is seen as risky because he pretended to be someone he wasn't. Still, folks give him props for keeping his cool during the encounter and folks are encouraged to dig deeper into his story. On May 5, 2020, investigators Jefferson and Bailey from the Jonesboro Police Department in Arkansas were conducting surveillance on an apartment in the Breckenridge apartment complex. Shortly after parking at a vantage point across from the apartment, they were observing. Trent Gadazaro, a resident of the complex, confronted the officers. Hi. I don't know, you tell me. What's going on? Then can you move along, please? No, can you please move along? This is private property. I live here. I live, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm a, a tenant that gives me landlord uh, capabilities. Could you please exit my driveway? Then bring out a sergeant right now. Bring out a sergeant right now. Check this out, guys. I got some crazy people now thinking. Try to get some uh, badge numbers. And what is this about? Get your sergeant out here, man. You're on my property. Beyond discrimination and habitability, the rights afforded to landlords and tenants are generally regulated by the state and vary in their extent and form from one place to another. Arkansas has some of the most outdated tenant rights in the country, with many of the legal aspects favoring landlords. Lease agreements between landlords and tenants typically do not obligate tenants to maintain common areas of apartment complexes, such as the lobby or parking lot, and do not grant tenants ownership beyond their dwelling. Whether or not an apartment complex parking lot is considered public will be discussed shortly. However, it's crucial to note that Mr. Godzaro likely doesn't have the authority to remove police officers or other members of the public from the parking lot only the property owner can trespass individuals from the premises.
Sirs, I need your names and badge numbers. I'm going to have to report this. Nah, man, they on my driveway. I live here. I don't need no police around here. Listen to your sergeant. Your sergeant's going to tell you you can't stand here. You could go on the road over there, but you can't stand here. Go tell my girlfriend to call Miss Carla. They're doing it again. Call Miss Carla? Yeah, tell, tell Barbie to come out here call Miss Carla. They're on my property. They have no reason to be here. They need to leave. They could go on, they could go on the road where it's public, but this is my driveway. I live here. People live here. You don't have a right to be here. You need to go onto the road, sir. You need to go onto the road, sir. All right, after you get off the phone with Carla, call the non-emergency police department and explain to them that they need to send a sergeant out here so that these people can understand that you could be on public property, but you can't be on private property. The scenario examines whether apartment complex parking lots are considered accessible to the public under the law, particularly in the context of law enforcement actions like DUI cases. It cites a 2012 Idaho Court of Appeals case, which concluded that unless there are clear barriers or restrictions, apartment complex parking lots are generally open to the public, allowing law enforcement officers to enter without needing permission from the property owner. Additionally, an Arkansas statute gives officers authority to enter private business parking areas to enforce laws, potentially including apartment complexes, although the statute's wording leaves room for interpretation. Nevertheless, unless the property owner specifically bans them, officers are usually allowed to enter the complex, especially when pursuing a suspect or conducting surveillance while waiting for a search warrant. Since you don't want to give your names and badge numbers, which is the policy, you're also going to be reprimanded. What's your badge number? They refuse to identify themselves. At this point, I don't believe them to be police officers because they have not identified themselves as police officers. Who are you and what are you doing on my property? Who are you and what are you doing on my property? So check this out, fellas. I ain't got to leave my porch for this, do I? I ain't even got to leave my front porch. Where are you doing on my property? Identify yourselves in the vehicle. What you doing on our property? We've contacted the landlord. The landlord does not ever agree with you being here. She lives in Truman. If she has to come here and trespass y'all, you're going to be in some serious Come on, man, get him off the property. There's no reason for them to be here. They told me they have no reason to be here. Please tell them to leave. Yes, or at least go on the proper, uh, a proper place where it's the uh, public area. That's all we're asking. You're going to jail for disorderly conduct. For what? Mr. Godzaro and his neighbor got busted by Jonesboro cops for supposedly causing a scene by cussing in public. But it seems like this arrest doesn't hold water under the First Amendment, which protects folks' right to speak freely, even if it's not exactly polite. The cops messed up by not understanding Arkansas's disorderly conduct law and violated Mr. Godzaro's rights. He's planning to file complaints and maybe even sue the cops, but he's strapped for cash. The cops totally dropped the ball by not calming things down not getting how free speech works and slapping cuffs on Mr. Gazzaro without good reason. A little explanation from the cops about why they were there might have avoided the whole mess. Mr. Gazzaro, even though he was off base about some legal stuff, still had every right to call out the cops' behavior and shouldn't have been arrested just for mouthing off. This whole ordeal shows why it's crucial for both citizens and cops to know their legal stuff to avoid messy confrontations and hold each other accountable. In early October 2019, 19-year-old Yemi Guevara and his 21-year-old cousin were recording a police encounter while seated at the outdoor tables of Houghton Park in Long Beach, California. 
After filming the stop for about four minutes, Officer Romo of the Long Beach Police Department noticed Mr. Guevara and approached him. <clears throat> I don't answer any questions. What's that? I don't answer no questions. Well, I'm just trying to find out if you're supposed to be in school or not. Don't worry about it, sir. You know what? Well, since we're by the school, yeah, I am a little worried about because that's what we're supposed to be doing. That's fine, so sir. So, are you supposed to be in school right now? Nah, sir. Okay, how old are you? Doesn't matter, sir. Yes, it does matter. No, it doesn't. See, you told me he's 21. How old are you? All right, doesn't matter how old I am. Okay. Get hey, recorded, fool, because he's trying to do some. Over here. All right. Oh, you got it's it? Recording. It's okay. Come on over. Let's go over to because I got to figure out how old you are if you're supposed to be in school right. or not. I don't, I don't want no searches or no seizures. Well, it either. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I just, I didn't do nothing. Uh, listen to me. No. School's in session. All right, I know that. Okay. You look like you're supposed to be in school. Well, I'm not. Well, then how old are you? Does it matter? Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. You came over me because I'm recording you. That has nothing to do with it. You All right, look then. Why are you, why are you I'm telling you why. You're harassing me right no, now, sir. Okay, come on. Let's, let's come on over here. Come on. Let's go over here. Nah, yes, I no, no, let's walk over here. All right, for sure. Okay. He doesn't have to with him videotaping. That's his right to do so. Yeah, so why he's coming over here telling me how old I am? I didn't even do nothing. Because you look young. And I I'm not young. young. I'm well, not how young. How old are you? I'm just making sure y'all don't do nothing. That's fine. We're not, how old are you then? I'm, I'm old. See? I'm old. I don't know. You got ID to prove it? I do have idea, but okay, I'm not going to show you. I didn't do no. All right, this, come on. I didn't do no crime. No. I know, but until no, I find listen, out, listen, you're not listen, supposed listen, to be in school. Whole thing. All right, I'm, I'm 19. There. Okay, where's your idea? I don't have ID. I don't got to provide ID if I didn't do no crime. That's. Is that right or not? No. In California, you don't have to show ID to cops unless you're driving. Disorderly conduct is governed by California Penal Code 148. Some cops try to use this law to arrest people who won't ID themselves, citing a 2004 Supreme Court case. But that case only applies to states with stop and identify laws, which California doesn't have. So in California, you're not legally required to show ID to cops, even if they suspect you of a crime. They can still detain and investigate you if they have a good reason, though. Just know that Mr. Guevara did nothing wrong by refusing to show ID or give his name. I'm not. It's not. If you name your badge number, it's right there. Your badge number? It's 5641. Your name badge number? 377. What is your name? I don't have to provide. I just asked you. Listen, I understand. I don't have to provide name. I didn't do nothing wrong. In your opinion, you didn't. In our opinion, you did. Like what? Okay. Say not. Say not what? You're going to let me finish or you're going to interrupt me? I don't know because you're. Okay. I can't answer your question. He came up to me. Yes. For no reason. No, I had a reason. What was the reason? You look kind of young. I'm you not like young. I don't I'm about to go to you work. Look. Okay. Well, then, can you prove it? You're no, because then you're trying to go run me in your system. Like, what like, is that? What? I just want to make sure you're uh, you're old enough. I am old. I told you already. Okay, I'm 19. You, what's your name? I don't have to tell you my name. Uh, I don't have to tell you my name, sir. You know that. I didn't oh, do nothing wrong. Okay. Let me let me explain something to you. You can explain everything you okay. want, sir. We can do this real quick. You have quick? a body cam on? No, you guys don't. No. You see, now it's more sketchy now. You well, see, I don't want to. Sketchy. You you have you, your video. You just grabbed me I, and took me over here. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I'm trying to get you over to my car. Without... I don't want you. I'm. We're fine well, right then, here talking. Then, yeah, okay, then just show you, me you, your ID or. I don't. Got, I don't have. Right I don't gotta show you no ID. Yeah, you do. For what? For what I, just, crime? I just explained to you. I'm not. I just told you. He told you he's 21. The crime of daytime hey, loitering. They, you with no, them. No, no. With you. I'm doing what, what did I do? Daytime loitering. Okay? Oh, daytime loitering. Yeah. Wow. The juveniles, daytime loitering. So I got to figure out that you're. Now That's right. How are we loitering? Officer Romo tells Mr. Guevara he's being investigated for hanging around during the day, referring to a city law about minors being out during school hours. Romo thinks Guevara looks young, has a backpack and is close to a high school, which makes him suspicious. But there's a part of the law that says if a minor is doing something protected by the First Amendment, like recording the police, they're exempt. Courts in California have said recording police is protected since a case in 1995. So even though Romo had reason to be suspicious, Guevara's recording of the police means he's not breaking the daytime loitering law. If you're, yes, you're supposed to be in school? We are not in school. Well, I don't know that. So all you have to do is prove Can that you, to me. Then. No, I told you I'm 19. I don't okay. got to prove you. He told you he's 21. Why are you telling him to go prove something? You 
because he, he's not because he's no. not being sketchy like you. I'm not. Yeah, I was you recording. Are. You you come up. No. You post up with Modelo. You like you would have told me. If you would have told me, hey, I'm 19 right away. Nah, I might have. I don't okay. gotta tell you nothing. It's my rights. Okay. Listen to me. I'm gonna call another unit now. You can call they're gonna they're gonna take you to the school now. What school? The school, Jordan. I don't go to Jordan. Well, I don't know that. I don't go to Jordan. Well, that's where you're going to end up going if, unless you show me how old you are. All right, now I'll file a complaint, y'all. Huh? I'll file a complaint, y'all, for that's harassing fine. me. You can. All right, go ahead. I will. But they're going to come and take you anyway until that's you fine. ID yourself. I don't got to ID myself. Okay. Officer Romo gives Mr. Guevara a choice. Either show his identification or go with him to the nearby high school to confirm if he's a student there. Involuntarily transporting citizens is a contentious issue in court. Most historical laws regarding involuntary transportation of suspects are at the state level, but the Supreme Court tackled the matter in the 1979 case of Dunaway v. New York. Like many state courts, the Supreme Court believed that forcing citizens against their will constitutes an arrest and requires probable cause. In Dunaway, the court ruled that officers who questioned a suspect without probable cause violated his Fourth and Fifth Amendment rights, stating that the detainment and transportation were no different from a traditional arrest. Justice Byron R. White, in his concurring opinion, stressed the need to balance police interests with citizen privacy, but acknowledged the difficulty in establishing a universal precedent. The Dunaway case influenced the Supreme Court's decision in the 1983 case of Florida v. Royer, where the court stated that police confinement beyond a Terry investigatory stop must be justified by probable cause. This decision was reaffirmed in the 1985 case of Hayes v. Florida. Even if Mr. Guevara wasn't doing anything constitutionally protected, it's unlikely that Officer Romo would have the authority to transport him involuntarily without legitimate evidence to support his suspicions. Here comes fine. our sergeant now. See? It's That's fine. even better for you. It's fine, man. Shoot. I know I didn't do nothing wrong. I have no problem. Y'all came well, up with me, you, grab, you, grab me. you grabbed me, you grabbed me. You sorry, I told you I was 19 already. Well, you got proof? No, I don't have to prove. Okay, what's your I, name and birthday then? Why, well, you see, I know. I'm not doing that either, sir. Come on. You know, I have hey, rights. what's your birthday? You know your rights. birthday? You don't have the right to tell you. He didn't do no crime. Oh, is this he, is, is this he my, the one that tells you what to do? This is my cousin. Okay. Well, let him talk then. No, he, can talk. he don't have to talk. He can stay right there all he wants. I didn't say. I didn't you do nothing talk, wrong. Though. Sir, can you get We're your guy? Talking. He came over here and insulted me, grabbed my arm, telling me how old I was. Yeah, and I told you I was 19. I go to LBCC. Okay. Now he wants he grabbed me, tugged See, me. Why, didn't you t why couldn't you tell me that? Because you grabbed me and tried to tug me. Now you try to come that, up me and try to. I'm you come try over to my car, yeah. I'm 19, sir. Okay. And you over here grabbing me. Do you have ID to prove you're 19? Do I have to show ID if I well, never I'd did? I'd like it. to know if you're 19. Otherwise, maybe you go to school. Right I don't here, go to school, sir. Okay, you well, can take my how word. Do, how do I know that? You, you look not? like you're underage to me. You don't look like you're 19. <laughs> so all right, it's that's fine, my opinion. Bro. That's fine. You have a backpack. You're at the school. All right, I have a backpack. He has a backpack too. We yeah. go to the same job. Do you want to take him over to school and find out where well, he's Well, yeah, I have a, a unit coming right okay. now. All right, it's fine. So if you it's want fine. to go to the school. No, it's fine, man. You guys are harassing me and everything. No, it's okay. not harassing It is no, harassing me, man. No, he, he assaulted no, me isn't. too. Why don't you no. go to law school and you can figure it out? No, nah, I don't got to go to law school. Yeah, you do. Well, all right, man. Watch too much YouTube. That's your problem. No. Yeah. Sure. That's Where what do you live? Do. I ain't gotta tell you that. I live around here, though. That's for sure. So you don't want to tell us your birthday yet? You want to be placed in handcuffs instead? If that's how it's gonna go. Yeah, that's how it's gonna want, go. It, all right, then that's you. That's how it's gonna go. All right, then, sir. Okay. Y'all want to harass me and stuff? He assaulted me already. It's all good. That's not assaulting. Nope, it is assault. It is assault. If he just comes up to you and just grabs you and tugs on you, we're done. Mr. Guevara got cuffed and thrown in a cop car by Long Beach cops, but they let him go after realizing he wasn't as young as they thought. The whole thing got caught on camera, and Fox 11 News covered it, but didn't wrap it up neatly. The cops got called out for not understanding the loitering laws and for messing with Mr. Guevara's right to film them. Even though the cops technically had the right to talk to him, 
They were basically just guessing, not using solid facts, which could mean they technically arrested him illegally. Mr. Gavaro stayed cool during the whole thing, handling himself well and standing up for his rights, although he could have kept his mouth shut a bit more. I understand your position in this. However, in the advice of counsel, I've been instructed not to answer any questions pursuant to Salinas versus Texas and are required to immediately raise Fifth Amendment protections. I don't answer questions. Okay, sir. My party is refusing to answer questions. I'll be entering and momentarily in the call. Go ahead and just send me a second, please. I've dealt with this guy before. Have you? Yeah. He's not wanting to give me any answers, so I'll probably hit him with some obstruction. He's it's, it's, it's just playing a game. Yeah. He's just he's not answering any questions. Yeah. If I, you refuse to give me any more information as far as your address or phone number, I'm going to charge you with obstruction as well. Uh, do you know what the, the, the elements of obstruction are? He's probably talking to his attorney right now. On September 12th, 2020, was driving his vehicle in the town of Castle Rock, Colorado, when he was stopped by Officer Watts of the Castle Rock Police Department for having an expired license plate. Hey. Hey. Officer Watts, Castle Rock Police, the reason I stopped you is your license plate expired back in March. Okay. So, I can get your driver's license right. and your registration for right. adventure. Right. I have no idea where it's at. So we'll have to Assuming that's the latest one right there. Yeah, this, that. One, this one is one year prior, but it's still I don't know. Yeah, expired. Um, Maybe this one. I don't know. Let me see what that one's good. Yeah, that's this one's, one. This okay. That not this, and not that. Whatever works. Okay. Is the court a good address for you? I'm sorry? Court? That's, is that... that's not mine. When lawfully pulled over, you must furnish your driver's license, registration, and insurance. David has done so as per the officer's instructions, fulfilling his legal obligations for the stop. Here I've blurred out details on the registration card to safeguard the privacy of an unrelated individual. The officer displays the registration card and inquires whether the address listed is accurate for David. Court, a good address for you? I'm sorry? However, the vehicle isn't registered to him, and David notes that the registration card doesn't belong to him. That's not mine. Note that the officer also has David's driver's license, which has all of David's personal information, including his address. I, I, what, oh, I'm on body cam. I have a little phrase I use. Uh, officer, I understand your position in this. However, in the advice of counsel, I've been instructed not to answer any questions pursuant to Salinas versus Texas and required to immediately raise Fifth Amendment protections. I don't answer questions. Okay, sir, you, you have been stopped for... I got it. For a reason. My, you've got my driver's license. And we're done. All right. Do what you got to do. We're good. I'm actually... What's the can I, can I get a phone number from you? Once again, I don't answer questions. You've got my driver's license, you got it, you got what you need to know. Be back in a few minutes. As mentioned earlier, David has already handed over his driver's license, insurance, and registration, fulfilling his legal obligations, which include providing his address to the officer. According to David, he is not obligated to provide a phone number. Officer, I understand your position in this. However, in the advice of counsel, I've been instructed not to answer any questions pursuant to Salinas versus Texas and required to immediately raise Fifth Amendment protections. I don't answer questions. In the Salinas versus Texas case, a man in Houston was interrogated by police during a murder investigation before being formally arrested or read his Miranda rights. He cooperated until questioned about potential incriminating evidence, at which point he chose to remain silent. Later, he was charged, tried, and convicted, partly based on his decision to stay silent during questioning. He argued that using his silence against him violated his Fifth Amendment rights against self-incrimination. This case emphasizes the importance of not answering questions without asserting one's Fifth Amendment rights, even though there may be risks, such as potential escalation by law enforcement. My party is refusing to answer questions. I'll be entering and momentarily in the call. And 32, go ahead and just send me a second, please. Officer Watts waits for backup as he writes David's citation. Hey, what's up? What's going on? I've dealt with this guy before. Have you? Yeah. 
Well, um, he's not wanting to give me any answers, so I'll probably hit him with some obstruction, including uh, expired 122 vehicle contact uh, plate. Officer Watts waits for backup as he writes David's citation. With anything last time, he uh, got called in for not wearing a mask at natural grocers, and then basically caused a disturbance, and then he was the same thing. He refused to answer any questions. I think if you tell him to do something, he'll do it. I, I asked him for his address. He refused to give it to me. Yeah, I asked won't. him for his phone number. He, he refused. I think if you're like, give me your address, I'll do it. But... Maybe I should phrase it, and um, I need your address, or I'm going to charge you with obstruction as well as expired. Yeah, I would maybe. just tell him if he says no, then he's it's, it's, it's just playing a game. Yeah. It's just not, he's just not answering any questions. All right. <laughs> So here's the thing. Yeah. All right. I am going to give you a ticket today. Yeah. All if right. you refuse to give me any more information as far as your address or phone number, I'm going to charge you with obstruction as well. Uh, do you know what the, the elements of obstruction are? I it's, do. It's, it's not cooperating I, with I, law enforcement no, in an investigation. It means, no, it isn't. I'll tell you what the elements are. The elements are is there have to be three people. You have to be need your address. All right. That's fine. Paul, you have to. A good day. I'll, I'll be with you in a minute. Code for. So, um, he is not wanting to give me anything, so he's probably talking to his attorney right now. <laughs> yeah, last time he told me he was hoping next time he was contacted by law enforcement that we arrest him so he can fake an injury and get, um, paid out. That's part of his retirement plan. Lying to law enforcement or tampering with potentially incriminating documents sought during a criminal investigation constitutes obstruction. To be convicted, the individual must have the intent to obstruct, know of the pending proceeding, and there must be a connection between the obstruction and the proceeding. Nowhere in Colorado's updated statutes does exercising the Fifth Amendment qualify as obstruction. For instance, muting body cams for nearly 10 minutes while citations are being written by Officer Watts would not constitute obstruction. Here's your information, Wait, uh, yes. and here's my card. Have a good day, sir. Have a good day. I'll leave mine rolling. Don't mind it. Okay. After Officer Watts handed David his citations, he promptly departed. David contested the charges in court and successfully defeated both, as the elements for obstruction were lacking. Merely consulting Colorado Revised Statute 42-3114 reveals that expired registration solely pertains to the vehicle's owner. David is currently pursuing legal recourse. The takeaway from this case echoes a recurrent theme observed in numerous videos. Law enforcement officers are increasingly either unaware of the law or deliberately exploiting their authority to retaliate against individuals exercising their constitutional rights, or perhaps both. Senor Contino eloquently summarized this sentiment in a recent email to me. The ones who suffer are us. Everyone in court is being paid to be there, even the cops. They're paid to deceive and are often trusted by the establishment because they're integral to the system. Police bring in countless new customers to the system each month, and the establishment relies on them to keep the legal apparatus lawyers, police officers, prison guards, and probation officers well-funded and operational with taxpayer money. If the establishment truly valued law enforcement, they would hire lawyers or, at the very least, mandate a law degree as a condition of employment. Thank you for tuning into our video on the U.S. Corrupt Cops YouTube channel. Don't let unjust actions by corrupt cops continue. Stand up and be part of the voice for justice by subscribing, liking, and sharing this video. Together we can make a difference and protect everyone's right to free speech. Take action today.